हे गाइस वेलकम टू डेटा ट्रैक योर वन स्टॉप चैनल फॉर ऑल द डेटा साइंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग अपडेट्स इन टूडियोज वीडियो वी विल लुक एट हाउ द रैंकिंग सिस्टम हैज इवॉल्व इन पिंट्रेस विद टाइम रैंकिंग सिस्टम इज एन इंटीग्रल इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ रिकमेंडेशन सिस्टम मॉड्यूल वी विल सी वेयर इट सिट्स इन द रिकमेंडेशन सिस्टम मॉड्यूल and the ranking system at pinterest has evolved with time as the scale of data is increased and also more sophisticated ml techniques the research is available how with that the ranking system has evolved uh, basically how the ml models have upgraded how the architectures have upgraded of the deep learning system and so on we will look um, all through it in this video so with that let's get started modern day recommendation systems recommender systems have become ubiquitous in our daily lives from online shopping to social media to entertainment platform basically buying something from amazon to browsing instagram to watching netflix recommendation systems are everywhere and modern day scalable recommendation systems follows a funnel approach that is it involves filtering and refining of recommendation through multiple stages starting with a broad criteria and narrowing down to more personalized suggestions at the later stage The common practice is to design recommendation as a two phase architecture. In first phase is the retrieval phase where we have multiple candidates generators. Retrieval model first retrieves a small fraction of related items or user interest from a large corpus and then the ranking model ranks the retrieved items for better conversion. So basically if you are browsing something through Amazon there are many millions of items. Now depending on your past history and your liking we can retrieve okay these x products are the most relevant ones. The, that is the retrieval phase and then how to rank these retrieve items happens in the ranking phase in this video we will be talking about the ranking module that how that ranking model has evolved with time in pinterest uh, so about pinterest people often come to pinterest for inspiration in their interest area or shopping ideas you get lot of inspirational and ideas from pinterest website the ranking layer of rexis in pinterest rexis means recommendation system the ranking layer of rexis in pinterest focuses on finding the relevant pins given the user context so improving this part of a system has a significant impact on user experience so everything that appears uh, in the pinterest is called pins and the ranking layer ranks this pins finding the relevant pins you given user context uh, and so on and this plays an important significant impact on the user experience with the increase in the scale of data and new research around ml techniques getting published every day the ranking layer at pinterest has also evolved accordingly they started with a gbdt which is gradient boosted decision tree model and then they moved to various deep learning model architectures we will look at different architectures in this video and then they also started using multitask learning which is a single model which is trained for multiple objectives like click check out add to cart and conversion and also nowadays they are using multitask learning combined with user sequence modeling that the order in which user interacts with these items or these pins so first let's look at the gbdt model gbdt model is a gradient boosting decision tree it's an ensemble learning method that builds a series of decision trees sequentially each tree is trained to correct the error made by the previous ones this is done by minimizing a loss function usually using gradient descent and in um, ranking task the gbdt is mostly trained using the following Uh, uh objective or using the following ways the first is point wise loss here the objective function when training a ranking model is to simply minimize the classification loss the items are ordered in descending orders of ranking score for example modeling clicks or no clicks so from user we would have shown uh, in the user feed various pins user would have clicked on some pins and some pins user would have ignored so the model just try to predict that which items would be clicked and which won't be clicked so it just trained in a classification loss manner and once the model is trained uh, all the retrieved pins are just sorted in the descending order of their click probabilities so that is the point wise loss second is pair wise loss in pair wise ranking the model learns from pairs of items for each pair it tries to ensure that the item with higher relevance is ranked higher a common pair wise loss is hinge loss or logistic loss which penalizes for incorrect orderings so you in this training you get a, uh, you get a pair that item 1 should be ranked higher than item 2 and you train the model in such a way that uh, the higher relevant uh, item of the pair comes before the lower relevant one there is also lambda mart way of training which is again a variant of pair wise loss only where pairs of uh, relevance uh, in the items is provided as input um if variant of pair wise loss only lambda mart is a specific implementation of gbdt for ranking that uses a concept of lambdas the key idea is to adjust the gradient emphasizing 
Here's where the swaps could lead to large ranking metric improvement like NDCG, normalized discount cumulative gain. So basically while ranking, um, we get a pair of items where item 1 is more relevant to item 2 and while model training um, between two pairs, the model will prioritize or emphasize more on a pair which could better the ranking metrics that is something like NDCG. So it's a pairwise loss which with an extra angle that the pairs which have better contribution towards the ranking metric like NDCG will be prioritized more and again the training will happen through gradient descent only. All the modern day uh, ranking models are based on deep learning. So in this slide we will try to understand why deep learning models outperform previous models and there are many reasons we will look uh, through them. So first is use of embeddings. Neural network extract much from sparse features and convert them into dense embedding. So basically let's say you have uh, many categorical features for example category of the item uh, and so on. So this cat there can be many categories but deep learning is good at is converting this sparse features like categorical into dense embeddings and it really helps um, uh, to better predict the uh, click or conversion probabilities hence the use of embeddings makes deep learning model very efficient. The second is use of multiple task labels and data. The same model learning multiple accents like click, cart, order, return, etc. will have access to more data and more varied pattern to learn from. Otherwise, conversion will have less data compared to clicks. So basically, let's say you are training a tree based model for conversion and we know conversion is a sparse thing. There will be lesser data for conversion. But in deep learning, if you have a single model which is trained for click, cart, order, return and conversion, even for sparse objectives like conversion it will have access to different varied data and more amount of data hence uh, with multiple task learning the deep learning models are able to beat the tree based model the third reason is more parameters for better generalization definitely the deep learning models have more parameters to generalize better when there is huge amount of training data available and another reason is non-linear feature creation capability deep learning models capture complex pattern and abstraction in the data as we go to deeper layers compared to tree based models. So, uh, so as um, the data is more and in the architecture if you have more deep, deep, deep layers then in the uh, deeper layers the complex pattern learning is better. Then learning cross features and high order features. Uh, with some adjustment in the neural network architecture which we will see in the upcoming slides it can learn cross features and high order features which without the need of manually crafting cross or polynomial features. For example, younger users might be more likely to click on electronic products than older user. A cross feature could be age and product category. So basically, let's say uh, uh, user age is important, user category of item is important. But when they come together, it's more important. So this is called cross feature, which is you are combining age and product category. Now, uh, for this type of feature, manual, mostly we manually craft this kind of features but with some changes or adjustment in the neural network architecture it can learn cross features high order features automatically so that is another advantage of deep learning which we will see in the upcoming architectures and other is efficient use of temporal sequential patterns through attention mechanism like the last k clicks or last k order items of the user and uh, running through the self attention it can generate self attended richer representation hence uh, deep learning models achieve better accuracy. So with this complex features which gets created which are self-attended richer representation deep learning performs better than the tree based model. So because of all these reasons the modern day uh, ranking systems are based on deep learning. Uh, next we will look at how these deep learning architectures have evolved. We will look from 2016 to current 2024 and uh, also the reason to look from look at all the architecture is that the modern day architecture has not Change completely from 2016. It is just using some of the ideas from 2016, 2017, 2018 and enhancing it. So looking at this um, uh, chronology that how these models were introduced and what the next architecture improved over it, it will give a good picture. So let's look at the first architecture which, which is wide and deep learning architecture. It's a 2016 Google paper where um, there is a wide network and a deep network. We know that this is how a deep learning model looks like, right? And this is how a uh, linear regression model looks like, which will just have one layer. And this is how a wide and deep model looks like. There is uh, one component which is wide and another component which is deep. So how this kind of architecture helps is, uh, with the wide component memorization happens. What that means is the wide component is essentially a linear model that is capable of memorizing interaction between features. It is good at handling sparse features that capture co-occurrence of feature pairs. 
so basically this uh, white component is just a linear model and it is useful in recommendation system where certain combination of features let's say some user and item appears very frequently those kind of things it can memorize that okay this item or this user features are uh, occurring very frequently so it will memorize it and we will have the goodness of a linear model and from deep uh, model the, the deep component we will uh, have the capability of generalization the deep component being a neural network is capable of generalizing to unseen feature combinations by learning high level feature interactions it captures complex patterns and abstraction in the data uh, that the white component cannot so white component is a linear model while the deep component is a non-linear model it has multiple layers it generalizes better to unseen data and learns complex pattern so the white network is just a linear model w transpose x plus b while deep component is a neural network model and finally what we do to predict the final output which is the final probability by combining the strengths of both wide and deep component the model can handle a wide variety of feature interactions both feature frequent and rare uh, this leads to better performance on tasks that require both memorization and generalization so finally both the components are used to predict the final probability and using the goodness of wide and deep network which is linear and non-linear component uh, we are able to better the accuracy in 2017, uh, enhancement over wide and deep network was introduced uh, with deep FM. Deep FM is a factorization based uh, uh, architecture. Deep FM is a neural network architecture designed for recommendation system. It combines the strength of factorization machine and deep neural network to effectively model both low order that is first and second order and high order feature interaction. So basically if you look at the architecture it is similar to the wide and deep. This is the deep component and this is the wide component. But in the wide component they have added one more layer which is the FM layer. So what this FM layer does is not only the linear uh, features it is able to learn it is also able to learn cross features basically the second order features. Uh, like the one that we were seeing age and category can be together important how it does that is given the input feature x we have a common embedding layer uh, so given the input vector x the embedding layer maps each feature xi into a dense vector vi so xi and vi because there can be multiple categorical features right so each categorical feature we can uh, denote by uh, x uh, sub i so xi into a dense vector vi so and the uh, embedding layer is common for both wide and deep network the white network consists of FM layer. FM layer again consists of linear and pairwise interactions. Linear we have already seen just WX and pairwise what it does is for each categorical feature we have the embeddings right because the embedding layer would have given us the embedding VI. So for each of the two uh, categorical variable we can do the dot product of their embedding. So that is what it's done here. The dot product of the two embeddings where VI VJ you know the dot product of the embedding VI and VJ. So basically we have a linear layer which just uses the embedding and we have a uh, pairwise interaction which computes the uh, dot dot product of all the categorical features. So there will be n square uh, such combinations. And this completes our FM component. Deep component is a deep neural network which will be a neural network uh, deep in nature and it will uh, learn complex pattern and non-linear patterns. The output from line, uh, from the FM component which is linear and pairwise interaction and the deep component are concatenated and final dense layer combined with some con concatenated features is used to predict the final output. So we take the FM layer which is consist of linear pairwise interaction and also the deep component finally all those things are together used to predict the uh, final prediction. So it's a unified architecture by combining both deep FM layer uh, which is FMM DNN allowing it to capture more broad spectrum of feature interaction and parameter sharing is there because the embedding layer is common. So deep FM is enhancement over white and deep network because white network was only capturing linear pattern while here it also capture uh, the, the, the cross uh, features which is high order features by doing a dot product of uh, embeddings. Hence the deep FM is an enhancement over wide and deep network. In 2017 also another network, uh, network architecture from Google was introduced. It's called deep and cross network. So till now we have seen wide and deep network. We have seen deep FM and this is the deep and cross network. Uh, the idea is similar that we will have a dense layer component and the wide network will be replaced by a cross network. The idea is that in wide and deep network there was no cross features. In FM, deep FM there was uh, an FM layer which was capturing the second order feature but let's say you also want to capture third order fourth order or k order feature so there we can have cross network with multiple layers and as many layers those many cross features or those that many order features we can calculate the deep network captures implicit feature interaction that is itself it finds the feature interest uh, 
features which are interesting and non-linear patterns. The cross network is especially designed to capture explicit feature interaction, which are the cross features. The input layer consists of feature X and that is fed to an uh, embedding layer and cross layer. Each cross layer combines feature from previous layer with the original input. So uh, the cross layer will just be a linear layer WX plus B and again it will combine the input with that and again we will get the output of second cross layer again the input the the initial input will be combined with that so uh, how the mathematics look like if there are k cross layer it can learn up to k plus 1 order features uh, and x k plus 1 it will be equal to x naught which is the input again multiplied by w uh, k x k which is the output of uh, kth layer to give me the k plus 1 layers uh, output where x k plus 1 is the feature vector output of k plus 1 cross, cross layers uh, so, if there are k cross layer, it will be able to learn up to k plus 1 order features while deep FM was already able to learn second order features. So, finally, cross and deep layer outputs are stacked to predict the final probability. So, this is how the deep and cross network works. And in 2017, also the transformer network was, pr was uh, proposed. So, the transformer network was proposed in the paper, attention is all you need. The transformer was originally proposed for natural language processing task and has been game changing in all the enhancement or advancements that is happening around LLMs. However, it also shows great potential in learning feature crossing in the recommendation world. The self-attention mechanism in transformer en encoder maps the input into key, query and value uh, where Q and K are the query and key vector. They capture the feature interaction and cast the interaction into uh, vector V, which is the value vector. So basically, uh, the self-attention module consists of key, query and value vectors and uh, the attention module can create interesting features by attending to different features and creating compelling complex features. Non-linearity followed by multiple attention heads learns more engaging features. So basically, we have a multi-head attention which uses key, query and value vectors to create uh, complex features by attending to different features and that is followed by non-linearity and again more uh, multiple headed attentions like there are bunch of multiple head attentions which helps in learning more engaging features. The transformer also being a sequential model can also learn temporal features like last k interaction of the users and so on. The transformer model has demonstrated its capabilities by significantly improving model performance and its capability to do parallel process inputs makes it fast. Next we will look at the masknet architecture which was released in 2021. What masknet did was it combined the ideas of everything that we have looked till now the cross um, the cross net and uh, attention module, non-linearity, it has combined all those ideas and here comes the mask net architecture. So basically the idea on which mask net is based on deep neural networks generally combine features through additive operation. Mask net introduces multiplicative interactions through instance guided mask. So uh, the multiplication of features can also be important which we also call cross features but masknet emphasizes that when deep neural network combine features it only does additive operation while masknet is capable of introducing multiplicative interaction through instance guided mask. This mask apply feature wise multiplication to selectively emphasize or de-emphasize certain features based on a specific input instance. There is a feature embedding layer the raw input uh, features are transformed into dense vector representation through feature embedding layer. And then comes the instant guided mask. The instant guided mask consists of two layers. One is aggregation and projection. The aggregation is simpler, which is the neural network aggregation WX plus B. It captures global contextual information from the input instance. Then comes the projection layer. The projection layer reduces the dimensionality of the aggregated information to match the size of embedding uh, feature embedding. So basically the input is converted into feature embedding then comes the instant guided mask. Instant guided mask consists of aggregation and projection layer. The projection layer again converts the uh, output to the same dimension as feature embedding and the reason is uh, the feature wise multiplication where the multiplication of feature happens. After the instance guided mask has generated output which is of same size as the uh, feature embedding, uh, the multiplication happens. After the instance guide mask generates the mask values through aggregation and projection layer, these mask values are then applied to the original feature embedding. The multiplication happens feature wise, meaning each feature embedding is multiplied element wise by its corresponding mask vector. So the mathematics looks something like this, let E be the feature embedding vector and uh, uh, then we generate the mask vector which comes from the instead guided mask which is of the same uh, dimension as feature embedding uh, and this M is generated using aggregation and projection layer. Then again the input is multiplied with this mask vector element wise, feature wise, right? So this, this is how the multiplicative features are produced and the uh, difference here is the multiplication is happening element wise. So we can summarize mask net and also compare it with cross net in this way. Cross net 
captures explicit cross features through linear combinations and higher order interaction so all the combinations are uh, linear in case of uh, cross network but masknet enhances cross features capability by introducing non linear transformation dynamic masking which is kind of similar to attention mechanism this mask this element wise multiplication is like attending to some features and attending some, not to some features so selectively emphasizing and de-emphasizing so which is like an attention mechanism so it does cross features in a more elegant way through non linear transformation and uh, dynamic masking which is similar to attention mechanism which is like emphasizing and de-emphasizing on certain features thus masknet combines goodness of cross features attention mechanism and non linear transformation so uh, after looking at various architecture next we will look at how a modern day uh, deep learning uh ranker looks like a modern day deep learning uh, ranker utilizes the goodness of multitasking ensemble and user sequence modeling uh, the pinterest took some learnings from deep and hierarchical ensemble network paper from 2022 multitask learning in model ensembling frameworks and modeling user activity sequence have been pushing the recommendation model performance limits in recent year what is mtl multitask learning multitask learning combines multiple objective into a unified model by leveraging abundant on site actions like clicks on the platform to enhance the training of sparse conversion objectives so multitask learning combines multiple objectives like uh, predicting the click probability conversion probability return probability and so on in a single model and it benefits the sparse uh, objectives like conversion which have lesser data by utilizing the data of other uh, objectives as well and what is on in model ensembling technique in model ensembling of two or more model backbones like dc and transformer or masknet brings robustness and the benefit of various approaches we looked at various architectures and in modern day architecture they are used as an ensembling technique so in this architecture you can see that one of the module is masknet one is mlp one is transformer so you can use the goodness of different architecture different ml modules and uh, ensemble them so this is how you can use the goodness of various uh, Uh, ml architecture so this is the in, in model ensembling so we looked at how the modern day architecture look uh, uses multitask learning ensemble technique and also utilizing a shared bottom architecture for feature processing while maintaining separate top architectures uh, before combining layer optimization memory and compute so even though we are using multiple architecture the uh, the bottom component the input processing the uh, embeddings and all and create projection layer is common which creates is Uh, shared lower bottom architecture which is more efficient from memory and compute perspective and the last technique modern day architecture uses incorporation of uh, user sequence or temporal di dimensionality is basically the order in which interaction happened uh, the with the help of this transformer kind of uh, architectures which are sequential in nature we can look at the temporal dimension the time dimension not only the interaction but the order in which interaction happened Uh, so the incorporation of user sequence and temporal dimensionality into ranking model allows rich feature interaction uh, modules to learn recent seasonal and lifetime user interest shifts and patterns so it can learn recent seasonal lifetime and different shifts and patterns that happens because it looks at that temporal dimension as well so that's it in this video where we looked at how the ranking system in pinterest evolved with time we looked at how the models have evolved and how the deep learning architectures have evolved and what are the main ideas that modern day architecture uses that is uh, um, the goodness of multitask learning on ensembling and also using the user sequence modeling which uh, focuses on the temporal dimension hope you like the video please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye